Forget the T-Rex. Close your eyes. Picture, if you dare, a predator so ferocious and so utterly terrifying that it made even the mighty king of lizards tremble. A beast with jaws like serrated daggers, teeth longer than your forearm, and a hunger that swallowed whole ecosystems. This is the chilling legacy of the Carcharodontosaurus. The shark-toothed lizard is a monster more nightmare than flesh and bone. Its reign stretched across prehistoric Africa, a reign painted in blood and bone. But its story, like its shadow, stretches beyond. It whispers of ancient battles and of landscapes torn asunder by claws and teeth. It speaks of a time when the earth itself trembled at the footfall of a predator like no other. Along with Spinosaurus and Bahariosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus was one of the biggest theropod predators. It lived in northern Africa during the early to late Cretaceous period. It was one of the biggest Carcharodontosaurids, about the same size as Tyranodotin and Sauroniops, and a little smaller than Giganotosaurus. This species of lion grew to be 12 to 13 meters long, 3.5 to 3.8 meters tall at the hips, and 7 to 9 tons heavy. Dinosaur researchers used to think that they had the biggest head of all the theropods. However, the original head was missing the premaxilla and quadrate bones, which caused experts to get the size of it wrong. It has now been suggested that the length be cut down to 5 feet, 3 inches. So, either Giganotosaurus or Tyrannosaurus now have the record for having the biggest theropod head. Back in 1756, Charles Deperet and Jay Savernin were the first people to find fossils of a Carcharodontosaurus in North America. Its name was Megalosaurus saharicus at first, but Ernst Stromer von Reichenbach changed it to what it is known as today in 1831. During World War II, fighter planes belonging to the Allies were responsible for the destruction of these early remains of this dinosaur. The museum, along with all of the specimens of Carcharodontosaurus that it contained, was destroyed. However, in 1914, paleontologist Paul Sereno discovered further skull parts and discovered them in North Africa. Stephen Brusat and Paul Sereno proposed that the existence of a second species of Carcharodontosaurus saharicus was distinct from this specimen in a number of respects, particularly with regard to the maxilla and the brain case. The Carcharodontosaurus was a carnivorous dinosaur that had enormous jaws and razor-sharp teeth that could grow to be as long as 8 inches. It is possible that it lived in groups, similar to its related Mapusaurus. However, there is no evidence from fossil discovery to support this hypothesis. The animal could have been a hunter as well as a scavenger at the same time. The creature in question had a large skull that was adorned with more than 60 teeth that resembled blades. These teeth were designed to penetrate and rip apart the flesh of its prey, which might have been immature sauropods or ornithopods. In comparison to the arms of a T-Rex, its arms were longer and more powerful than those of a T-Rex. Each of their hands was adorned with three claws. Despite the fact that their arms were probably not used for hunting, it is possible that they were employed to assist them in mating. Carcharodontosaurus was probably a crafty and active hunter and recycler, much like the majority of contemporary canines today, according to the documentary that is known as BBC Earth's Planet Dinosaur. According to this program, the scenario is acceptable. According to Laramendi's calculation for upright speed, the Carcharodontosaurus traveled at a speed of around 22 to 33 km per hour. Physically speaking, it was unable to achieve a sprinting speed, much like every other megatheropod that weighed more than 3 tons. There were similarities between the brain endocast and the inner ear anatomy of Carcharodontosaurus saharicus and those of modern crocodilians. Although the size of the cerebrum in comparison to the whole brain was comparable to that of modern non-avian snakes, it was relatively tiny in comparison to the cerebrums of Cholerosaurian theropods and birds. The results and research that are now being conducted by scientists will undoubtedly provide more insight on the health, behavior, natural conditions, and connections within the Carcharodontosaurus species. If you enjoyed this video and want to keep exploring the wonders of ancient creatures, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content. Long after the reign of the dinosaurs, a new predator emerged from the shadows. Imagine a creature unlike anything you've ever seen, with razor-sharp teeth and a powerful bite. Meet the Cebicida, the colossal carnivores that dominated the Earth millions of years ago. These weren't your average reptiles. 
They were the undisputed kings of the land, dwarfing even the largest predators of today. But how big were they, and what secrets do they hold about the prehistoric world? The Sebicide family is made up of dead Sebicosuchian crocodilomorphs that lived on land in the late Cretaceous and Cenozoic periods in Europe and South America. They were the most recent group of non-crocodile crocodilomorphs to survive. Ogrusuchus firidus, which was found in the Upper Cretaceous Tremp Formation, is the oldest member of the group that we know of. In Europe during the Eocene, there are other records of the group. There were many different kinds of Sebicids living in South America during the Cenozoic, from the Paleocene to the Middle Miocene. Some types may have even lived until the border between the Miocene and Pliocene in Brazil. This group had a lot of medium and large-sized genera, from Sebicus to the Miocene giant Barinosuchus, which was six meters long. Each member of the Sepicida family has certain traits that set it apart from other crocobal groups. One feature that stands out is the long nose, which is different from the wider, stronger snouts found in many modern crocodiles. This longer nose probably helped with a different way of eating, maybe one that was better for catching certain kinds of food. Sebicids also have heterodont dentition, which means that their teeth are different shapes and serve different purposes in the jaw. This variety of teeth suggests that they specialized in certain foods, with some teeth better for grabbing and others better for cutting or breaking. Also, members of the Sebicida family usually have longer arms than other crocodiles, which suggests that they have evolved to move around on land more easily. The Sebicida family is different from other crocodiles because of these important physical traits. Sebicida was an ancient family of crocodiliforms that had a variety of physical traits that helped them do well in their specific settings. One of the most interesting things about their bones was how long and smooth their bodies were, making them look a lot like current alligators. This body shape suggests that they have evolved to move quickly through water, making it easy for them to get around. Also, the bones in the limbs of different kinds of Sepicida were changed by changes. Some species, like Sebicus acaeorhinus, had relatively long arms compared to their body size, which could mean they were better at moving around on land. These changes probably let them hunt for food on land and move quickly and easily when they needed to. The shape of Sebicida's heads and teeth tell us a lot about what they eat, and what role they play in the environment. One thing that made Sebesidae heads stand out was their long snouts, which held a lot of strong teeth. These teeth were usually shaped like cones and had sharp tips, which means the animal ate meat. Different species had different arrangements of teeth in their mouths. Some had heterodont dentition, which means that different types of teeth were used for different tasks, like grabbing or puncturing food. Also, the way the skulls of Sebicida animals are built says that they have developed strong jaws that allow them to hit their food hard and knock them out. Limb shape was very important for Sebicida animals to move around, showing that they were able to live in both water and land. By looking at fossilized leg bones, scientists can see that they have different features that were designed for different ways of moving. For animals that lived mostly in water, like Barinosuchus arvaloa, the arms were small and strong which probably helped them swim and move around in the water. Instead, species like Sebicus acaeorhinus had longer arms with well-developed joints and muscles that made it easier for them to move quickly on land. These species may have been more terrestrial in nature. The different shapes of their limbs show that Sebicidae were adaptable hunters that could live in a variety of environments, from wetland areas to open fields, where different ways of moving around helped them hunt and stay alive. The crocodiliform family Sebicidae which is now dead, was an important part of their habitats as the top hunters. Based on fossils, these animals probably ate a variety of foods, which changed based on their size, where they lived, and the kinds of animals that were available to eat. The shape of their teeth shows that they have changed in many ways to catch and eat different kinds of food. Some species in the genus Sebesidae had strong, sharpened teeth that could tear through tough meat. This suggests that they ate big animals like other lizards, small dinosaurs, and early mammals. Others had curved teeth that were good for breaking and holding, which meant they liked smaller food like fish, frogs, and small animals. Some fossilized Sebicidae individuals have gastrolites in them, which suggests that they may have eaten stones to help them digest, like crocodiles do today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content exploring the wonders of our planet's past. Forget everything you thought you knew about the king of the Cretaceous period. 
The mighty T-Rex wasn't even the biggest meat eater. There lurked the monstrous predator in the oceans, a leviathan with a bone-crushing bite and a taste for anything that dared enter its domain. This is the story of the Mosasaur, the true apex predator of the Cretaceous seas. The discovery of Mosasaurus can be traced back to the late 18th century, when fossils resembling marine reptiles were unearthed in various parts of Europe, particularly in the Netherlands and Belgium. One of the most important discoveries was in 1764 close to Maastricht, the Netherlands, when stone masons discovered big bones, among them a jawbone with strong teeth that was subsequently determined to belong to a Mosasaur. More remnants of what would eventually be identified as Mosasaurus and other Mosasaur species were found in the area as a result of these early findings, which aroused scientific curiosity and prompted more excavations in the area. Mosasaurus and other marine reptile fossils were discovered by paleontologists and fossil collectors during the 19th century, from marine sedimentary layers that date to the late Cretaceous epoch, which occurred between 70 and 66 million years ago. Some species of Mosasaurus were remarkable sea reptiles that could grow to a length of 50 feet or more. Different species of Mosasaurus varied in size. Some were smaller, ranging in length from 10 to 20 feet. During the late Cretaceous epoch, the biggest known species of marine reptiles was Mosasaurus hoffmanni, which was among the largest reptiles ever known. The size and proportions of Mosasaurus specimens may be inferred from measurements of particular fossils, such as the length of the head, the size of the vertebrae, and the proportions of the limbs. The streamlined body of the Mosasaurus made it ideal for swimming in the open sea. Numerous bones, including the skull, vertebrae, ribs, limbs, and tail, made up Mosasaurus's skeleton. With its strong jaws and enormous head, the Mosasaurus was able to catch and eat big animals. Mosasaurus's adaptable backbone allowed for effective swimming and aquatic maneuverability. The way that limb bones were altered to resemble paddles suggests that Mosasaurus swam mostly using its tail as propulsion. Mosasaurus has a large number of conical, sharp teeth that were ideal for grabbing and piercing prey. Mosasaurus's teeth were curled backward to help hold on to struggling prey items. Mosasaurus most likely consumed a variety of foods, such as fish, squids, ammonites, and other marine reptiles. Mosasaurus eating habits and food preferences can be inferred from fossilized stomach contents and tooth wear patterns. While it is uncommon to find direct evidence of skin texture and pigment in fossils, Certain skin impressions that have been preserved imply that Mosasaurus possessed sleek, smooth skin. Skin impressions from closely related sea reptiles, such plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, shed light on how Mosasaurus skin might have looked. The coloration of Mosasaurus may be inferred from studies of pigment-bearing structures called melanosomes in fossils, which show patterns of light and dark pigmentation for thermoregulation or concealment. Modern marine reptiles, including saltwater crocodiles, marine iguanas, and sea turtles, share some morphological characteristics with Mosasaurus. Mosasaurus had several characteristics with contemporary marine reptiles, including as streamlined bodies, paddle-like appendages, and effective swimming. But unlike contemporary marine reptiles, Mosasaurus belonged to a new taxonomic class and most likely exhibited unique ecological responsibilities and behaviors in prehistoric marine environments. Mosasaurus was a powerful marine predator that ate a variety of foods, the main one being other aquatic animals. Based on anatomical research and fossil evidence, Mosasaurus most likely preyed on fish, ammonites, turtles, smaller marine reptiles, and even other mosasaurs. It was obvious that this was a strong predator that could finish enormous meals because of its massive conical teeth, which were ideal for grabbing and tearing apart food. Mosasaurus most likely used an ambush hunting technique, using its strong tail and streamlined body to quickly sprint for unsuspecting prey. It would have had access to a large variety of possible prey species due to its capacity to live in both shallow coastal waters and deeper ocean habitats which would have allowed it to modify its eating habits to fit into different ecological niches. In its ecology in the late Cretaceous, Mosasaurus is thought to have been the top predator. Its massive stature, strong jaws, and sleek build indicate that it was a very proficient predator with the ability to take down enormous prey. Based on fossil evidence, Mosasaurus most likely ambushed its victims from below or outmaneuvered them in the water using its speed and agility. 
It then utilized its strong biting force and keen teeth to grab and kill its prey. It probably hunted both alone and in groups, taking advantage of whatever food that was both readily accessible and suited to its requirements. The presence of bite marks on the remains of other varine reptiles suggests that Mosasaurus may have engaged in intraspecific competition or even cannibalism, further highlighting its role as a top predator in its ecosystem. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Feel free to leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below.